Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria. Welcome to today's video. I have a Master's of Science degree in Human Nutrition and I specialize in helping you to build a high-functioning metabolism so that you can get and stay effortlessly slim, lean, fit and healthy for life, eating all the carbohydrates you desire. Why is that? Because they make you insulin sensitive. So today we're gonna to be talking about insulin sensitivity and how to measure it with a glucose meter. So this is my rely on, this is the meter, these are the test strips, these are the lancets, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use this. So you're gonna take a test strip here, insert it into the device, and then you are going to test your blood sugar. So I'm about one hour postprandial from lunch, which um, means that I'm not two hours. So two hours postprandial, you're gonna want your glucose level to come in at 140 or less, and then fasting, whew, you want your uh, reading to fall between 70 and 99. So I'm gonna show you guys some of my numbers. Okay, so this is right at 140. Like I said, I'm about one hour postprandial, so that's excellent insulin sensitivity. You want your numbers to fall within these ranges because they indicate that your insulin is working properly. When insulin works properly to take the sugar out of your blood and put it into your cells, it means that you're insulin sensitive and you are able to burn fat in the flame of carbohydrate, okay? So that kind of gets into today's second question. So that's kind of a three-part video, but I wanna talk a little bit more about the glucose meter here and just share some of my readings. So this was my fasting from this morning was 90. And this is my fasting from Sunday morning, 82. So those are perfect readings. Um, I do notice that my fasting tends to be a little higher when I'm dehydrated. So make sure you drink plenty of water because that will impact your glucose readings. But in order to get your glucose readings within normal range, again, fasting between 70 and 99 indicates normal insulin functioning and insulin sensitivity. And then you want your two hour postprandial, two hours after the start of a meal, to fall uh, at 140 or less. So this indicates that your insulin is doing its job. Your body isn't being overworked by your carbohydrate load. So a lot of people associate with elevated blood glucose levels with carbohydrates when in fact, um, insulin resistance, which is the cause of elevated blood glucose levels staying elevated, um, is due to insufficient carbohydrate intake and a high fat diet. So when it comes to insulin function, <clears throat> we want <laughs> sufficient carbohydrates there so that insulin can do its job. When we don't um, have sufficient glucose coming in at meal times. Um, this basically programs the body to be in fat storage mode and requires more insulin from the system in order to clear the blood sugar. And again, this happens from carbohydrate insufficiency and a high fat diet. High fat diet blocks insulin receptor sites where insufficient carbohydrate intake makes insulin lazy basically um, because the body wants to encourage fat production in the liver uh, via triglycerides, via de novo lipogenesis. So when you have proper insulin sensitivity and insulin function, when you eat a meal that's high in carbohydrates, like I ate um, a can of peaches in heavy syrup and I added sugar to it, um, my blood glucose went up from the meal my pancreas released insulin. The insulin came in and took the sugar and put it into my cells. And now you can see via my reading that my glucose levels are coming back down to normal range. Uh, that also means that insulin just came in, did its job, and now it's going back down to baseline levels. So insulin doesn't stay elevated unless you have insulin resistance. And some people coming on to this um, way of eating a high carb, low fat diet, sufficient carbohydrate calories, 
can experience some insulin resistance from their previous diet <laughs> um, initially um, in the form of seeing some elevated blood glucose levels, but I assure you that if you stick with it and improve your insulin sensitivity via the diet, getting early nights, staying hydrated and exercising, you'll see those numbers start to come back down into a normal range. So we want insulin to work properly. We want it to go up with meals and then come back down. When it comes back down, that's when we burn fat. <laughs> so fat burning is temporarily hindered when um, insulin levels are elevated, but then as soon as they come back down uh, between meals and when we're uh, sleeping, exercising, things like that, um, we are burning fat. We're always burning carbs and fat, but insulin going up does temporarily halt fat burning, uh, you know, for that brief period. So we want to become insulin sensitive. So insulin levels aren't always staying elevated. So that's where the keto people are like, oh, we don't want to eat carbs because carbs spike your insulin. You want insulin to come in and do its job properly and then leave. <laughs> Um, what those people don't understand is that they are programming themselves to be insulin resistant with their diet. They would fail an oral glucose tolerance test. So that gets into the third question is don't carbohydrates cause high triglycerides? Um, this again is a product of insulin resistance. The liver produces triglycerides in response to carbohydrate intake. Um, and carbohydrate availability. So basically if the body senses that there's not sufficient carbohydrate available to create um, energy, then it's going to make more triglyceride in order to um, produce more stored energy in the case of a famine. So we want, again, to row our boat in the direction of insulin sensitivity so that we can have normal triglyceride levels and down regulate de novo lipogenesis or the conversion of carbohydrate to triglyceride or fat. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Please um, leave any comments or questions down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for the questions. Bye.